What's up everybody? So recently somebody asked me and Dan how we actually do our Stream Squad show every week. We just want to put together a quick video just to show you how we do our cameras, how we do our audio, and also how we do our lighting. Hopefully from this you'll get some ideas for how to do your own simple setup for tripods if you need one, your own simple setup for audio if ours is a little more complex than you're willing to go right now, and also how to just do maybe a simple setup for lighting. We'll show you our really intense setup and then we'll give you a much simpler version of well. Yeah, so if you don't wanna go full blown with every single thing we show, you don't have to do all that stuff. Stay tuned, check this out, let's do this. Every week we do a live show and what we do is we have about four camera angles, we're using a computer screen, we do a pretty complex setup. Today we're gonna give you a couple quick tips for how to get started. We're just gonna give you the basic tips so that your videos look really great from the most simple setup to even more complex ones. So just pick and choose from maybe some of the ideas that we're gonna give you today here and hopefully you can find something that you can do for yourself. First little bit of this setup here, I guess, is our tripods. I'm actually plugging them in as well, our cameras. Why tripods? Because it's a lot easier to have a stable shot than have someone standing here holding up a camera. Not to mention, you're gonna need three people holding up cameras for this three camera setup as we have here. Yeah, just adding a tripod is, I think, the most basic way to make your video better. Just because people are gonna get nauseous looking at wavy video the whole time. The tripods we're using are just Manfrotto. These things are great because they fold up really small. Um, they're all actually the same. We just put a new head on these ones that gives us that ability to move back and forth if you want. Tripods are great. They give you that steady shot, but you can still get that steady shot if you don't have a tripod. The problem with that is you're gonna hear. You're gonna do something like this. You're gonna take your camera and you're gonna lean it up something like this and then it's getting that shot straight up at you and it doesn't look good. Maybe we'll do an example of that or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna look great if the camera is up here facing directly at you. You're looking completely at your audience. They're not looking up or down at you. It's just right there and it's gonna be a much better shot for you. So what we typically do for our setup for Stream Squad is we've got at least three angles right here on Angela and I. This first camera right here in the middle just serves as our main angle. So this is our wide shot that's got both of us up, but it's our kind of go-to angle when we start the show or when we come back from a segment, we'll go to this angle. What we also have is two angles on the side, so this one will be focused on the anchor who's on the left side. We also have a second camera over here, and this one's gonna be focused on the anchor who's on the opposite side. By doing this, we have a really dynamic sort of production we can pull off where we can go to both people talking when they're having a conversation. We can focus on one person on this side if they're the one leading the segment. We can also focus on the person on the other side if they're leading the segment. So this is our kind of core setup right here so that we can all be seen. So another angle that we do is since Dan is often running the show over here and he's helping kind of guide how everything goes, we also have another angle right here so we can see Dan and we just added it to this ring light setup so that Dan also is, is lit during this. By using this angle we have the ability to show Dan or whoever's directing the show over here and running switcher um, and it just kind of adds a dynamic angle just to pull us away from um, just what's happening at the front if we want to do something different. So. Uh, also, Dan will often have his laptop open here and we'll bring that in as a source using SwitcherCast. With the laptop here, that brings a total of five sources that we usually have for our hashtag stream squad. So let's talk about audio. So for our setup, we've got three people that are usually on camera. If you are gonna have each person with their own individual mic, you're gonna need to set up a mixer. So here's what we use for our setup. This is a Mackie 1204 mixer and we've got three mics into the top there. And here are the transmitters that each one of us wears. And then off the back, we've got the receivers for each one of them that are plugged into one, two, and three. This is how we get that into the iPad. Directly out of the mixer, into yeah. the iRig, yeah, I think and then this into is the a... iPad. We just have the gain down really low and we're going in just to the headphone jack on this iPad. So by putting mics on everybody, we make sure that 
everybody's got really good audio. Everybody gets heard really well. And Dan, since he's running the show, he can sit over here and mix the sound and make sure it sounds good before it goes in. Well, this is like a crazy setup. Well, I don't, I don't wanna say crazy, but this is just a more expensive, more advanced setup. If you're just getting started, something like this is a great option. This is an iRig Mic HD2. They have a headphone input if you wanna check it. What's great about this mic is it does have the lightning plug on it. I've seen some really good examples in our user group of people even just using a uh, little TRRS um, lav mics and getting great results with that as well. So really um, just adding any sort of little mic is gonna help. So we've given you an idea of all the different angles that we use. We've also shown you our audio setup over here. But now let's talk about our lighting setup and let's just see the different things that we've added to our production. You certainly don't have to do all of the stuff that we're doing with our lighting, but if you want some ideas for how to make it work for you, you can check some of this stuff out. We certainly didn't start off this way, but over time we've just grown to see that if we add more light to our setup, it really helps us stand out and it all looks better in the end. So I'm gonna show you from this perspective what all the lights that we have set up are. So check this out. So the two main lights we have are just these two square LED panel lights. And these diffuser boxes come right off. If we wanted to pull them off, we can just unvelcro them and they come off of there. By adding the diffuser boxes, it really softens the light that hits our face and it helps avoid shadows behind us because we don't want them casting on the wall if we can help it. And we're doing a pretty good job of avoiding them now. Another tip about lighting is that the bigger the light source, the softer the light's gonna be. I've actually added this T5 light from Home Depot. It's just got two bulbs in it, and that bar right there really helps illuminate everything, and because it's so big, it helps make the light really soft. What we also added were these two lights on the sides. So what I like about these lights is they've got these barn doors on them so I can really shape where the light's going. So the key here is to keep this edge from hitting our faces while we're sitting over here. So if we sit down here, you can see that light is never gonna be on my face until I get out here. So you can see out here that light's shining, but over here, we're getting mostly this light. What's great about these lights is we just connected them to a dimmer so we can really brighten them up or we can tone them exactly where we want. Adding the light to the back helps us avoid all the shadows behind us from these lights, and it also helps separate us from the background. We're actually probably gonna move this whole thing forward a little bit more just to try to take advantage of some depth of field stuff. So that's kind of a summary of our lighting. We've got our main key lights here, we've got another big light here, and then we've got our background lights that are off to the side. If you're not in a position to buy a bunch of different lights right now, and you don't wanna do a complex setup like we have, here's a few quick tips. So one of the main things you wanna keep in mind is you want your subject to be brighter than the background, and this really doesn't look that great. But if I do something as simple as going over here closer to this window and then facing the window, well now I've got a lot more light on my face and the background is darker. So this is automatically gonna make your videos better. So just keep that in mind. See if you can find a way to get your subject brighter than the background behind them. So a few other things that we do with our setup here. We actually have a monitor here, so let me turn it around for you guys. This is a reference monitor for Jimmy and Angela, so they know what camera's live. We also do the tally lights as well, um, which gives them a really good indication of which camera's live at which time. But with the reference monitor, they'll just be able to see the videos I'm playing, they'll be able to keep up with that as well, and it just makes things a little bit smoother. Um, they don't always have to be looking for me to give them a cue when to start talking, they'll see it here happen. One last thing to look at here, and this is something that we recommend and all of our users also recommend, is bringing your own network. So that's what we got here. We got our Google Plot hooked up to our internet connection, and that is what our cameras are connected to, and those are the only things that are connected to it. So we know we're gonna get a steady, reliable upload speed as well as connections between the cameras. Something else that you can see here as well that we haven't set up yet, but we're going to be doing very soon, this net switch here. So we have this plugged into our Google Wi-Fi puck, and with that we have a bunch of these other ports. So using an adapter like this, which is of course the ethernet and then the camera adapter, the USB adapter for Apple, we can plug in ethernet cables to those cameras and wire all of our cameras in and that way we'll have zero frames dropped and it'll be really, really fast connections between the cameras. So yeah, that's our 
setup here. Uh, hopefully you can get some inspiration from this and start building your own setup. But even if you're just trying to get started and don't have all that stuff, Jimmy, what's the, how can, how can people just get going with this? Number one, put your camera on a tripod. Make sure it's stabilized and get it out in front of you. Number two, get some good audio. Grab an external mic and connect that to your device or just definitely find a quiet place somewhere if you have to use the built-in microphone on your mobile device. Just keep that device close to whoever's talking. Yeah, keep it close. Number three, try to have some good lighting. If you can't do all of this, just try to get another light so that your subject is brighter than the background. Yeah. Hey, you know what's a really good light source that you can use? What's a really good light source we can use? The sun. That one's free. So this is how we do our setup. We would really like to see how you do yours. If you have any comments on what we could do better, let us know. And we definitely want to see what you did. So please send us some pictures of your own setups, how you do your normal thing in your studio, and check us out. Also, we're really trying to get 5,000 subscribers. It's not a lot to ask. If you know somebody who might benefit from learning how to do different things with mobile video or wants to go live, please invite them to our channel. Tell them to subscribe. Let's do this together. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in like and comment and subscribe and all those things.